and welcome back to my channel. I'm Shai and this is my crafting look and wait, something's weird, hang on. Okay, okay, that's better. Hi! Today we are celebrating a very special birthday. It's Animal Crossing New Horizons fourth anniversary this year and if you watched me for a while I've been an avid fan since release and I've played Animal Crossing New Leaf in the past and I've played Pocket Camp and it's, it's definitely a favourite game franchise for me and uh, so in honour of Animal Crossing New Horizons fourth birthday I wanted to make a piece of clothing from the game and I picked drum roll please the mom sweater <laughs> the quilted version quilted version is a weird name so this is clearly granny squares but let's make this i have yarn and i have a plan i'm aware i'm far from the first person on youtube to recreate this particular sweater but i love it so i wanted to make it anyway so let's scoot over to the left a little bit and have a little look at the specifics for this so to break this down we have a bunch of granny squares in here so we have one two three four five one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten this jumper is the same on front and back so it's going to be 20 squares and the sleeves if we zoom in they are quite obviously knitted um it's, it's more visible in game but it's a knitted fabric and then we have two options we can do a waistcoat stitch and crochet but that isn't the coziest it's pretty stiff so i am going to actually do knitted sleeves and I might do brioche get those bigger squishier cozier more defined stitches I want to crochet the bottom ribbing because I like crochet ribbing so if we look at the squares there is one that's not visible at the moment but I'll get that one from from in game because <laughs> I do own this jumper uh, but we have one blue dark blue and pink and then we have green pink and light blue and then we have one that is is that a white square in the middle i think it's white the blue and we have orange yellow green and red there's a lot of colors there's a lot of squares <laughs> and they are all different <laughs> so this is gonna be fun so yeah without further ado because uh, I think I'll, I'll get to the construction when I get there I'm just gonna start with making the squares uh, and yeah I will catch up with you once I've done that and we can piece it together <laughs> so let's start with the squares if you want to tag along with this project, I do have a pretty in-depth guide on how to make a granny square in the previous video. It's linked up in the corner and you can use the timestamps in that video to find the tutorial. What I am doing differently here though is I'm changing colours every row and weaving in my ends as I go. Like I said, you are very welcome to join in this project. But this video today is not structured like a tutorial, simply because this project was a lot of trial and error, as you will see. There's some foreshadowing for you. Please just use this video as inspiration if you do want to make your own, and maybe I can make a tutorial and pattern for this in the future if you guys would like. Like we saw at the start of the video, I have 20 squares to make, plus 4 solid red squares for the top row, which works out to 12 squares for the front and back panel respectively. I am also adding a row of red around each square. Honestly, the squares were a lot of fun to make. They have a lot of unusual colour combinations that I would never go for on my own, so I enjoyed working through all of that. 
This particular one is giving 90s liminal space playroom at like McDonald's. With the squares done and blocked, it is time to sit down and attach them together in three rows of four squares per row. I am attaching them here from the wrong side using a slip stitch join. Which I ended up having to rip out. I decided the panel was way too small after holding it up to my body, so I undid what I just crocheted and got back to the squares. I added one extra row of red to every square to make them a bit bigger. With this extra row done, I got back at it with reattaching the squares. This time I did a join on the right side, I decided I wasn't a fan of the seam on the wrong side. I'm still doing a slip stitch join though. I'm following my photo of the sweater from the game to know what squares go where. That's the panel, finally. And of course, the orange quality control inspector is here to do his job. I got started with expanding the panel. I need to add about 6cm to the sides and bottom, not counting ribbing, and 18 to the top to fit my preferred measurements for this project. So what I am doing to meet those numbers is just treating this like one great big granny square, going around with granny stitch until I'm happy with the size. This took a while, maybe because of orange distractions, but was quite relaxing. Maybe also because of orange distractions. Isn't he such a baby? After reaching my 6cm on all sides, I am just doing the top back and forth to add the extra height and here I am marking out where I want my neckline on the front panel so I know where to do my decreases and how wide the hole needs to be. Which I also ended up hating. You know how I said I wanted it to have a knit look? Yeah. Do you know what does not have a knit look? Granny stitch. So I'm deviating from the plan to try something else for the back panel, casting on stitches to match the measurements to see if maybe I can knit around the panel instead. Thank you. 
so now we've got two panels in the works. I am feeling confused and not really vibing with any of them so let's just put these to the side and start on the sleeves. Honestly, this was such a nice break from all of the thinking. I did a bit more research on knit light crochet stitches and found one I liked. The camel stitch. So I'll just be working through my sleeve over here. This was also a very welcome break because at the time here my migraine problem had gotten a lot worse and my brain capacity felt like it was below zero when it comes to problem solving. The sleeves were an easy back and forth half double crochet thing, or at least we can pretend they were. In my migraine adult state, I made silly mistakes like decreasing on one side only and then increasing on one side only when supposed to keep the sides straight, but still, this was mindless and relaxing. Hello, I am back. I have not been filming for the vlog for about two weeks. It's been a lot of migraines, it's been a bunch of other things I've been needing to work on and I've also been away. It's Monday today, I was away Thursday to Saturday uh, at a fibre festival with my sister-in-law and it's been great and it's been fun but I am very 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 tired. Anyway, um, I am back now ready to tackle this project again. I really needed a little bit of a break from it because everything was just annoying me. So last I talked to you about my planning for the project um, in this video, I was going to rip out the granny stitches around the crochet squares and knit and I started that and I hated it, absolutely hated it. The fabric when you crochet versus knitting is quite different so uh, the knitting was a lot softer, looser, thinner fabric and that combined with the crocheted squares. It, I did not like it, I did not like how it felt and I did not like how it looked so I ripped all of it out and I crocheted around it again. Like I finished both panels with just granny stitch and I, um, yeah, I don't like this either. I mean, I don't hate it, it's not ugly, but it's not what I wanted, it's not it's not looking like in the game and it is annoying me because I wanted this to be accurate to the game. I wanted it to look knit around the crochet squares and it doesn't look knit around the crochet squares. So I sort of went, okay I'll put that to the side and I will figure out the sleeves and I want to find a stitch that works for the sleeves because I don't want to knit the sleeves because again I don't like the combination of the two fabrics. So I have the start of a sleeve here. I am going for the camel stitch which is um, half double crochets but you do it in the third loop and I really like how this is turning out. It's kind of looking like a knit rib almost. It does look crocheted but it, it kind of looks like a knit rib and I think this is the best option for me for this project for it to sort of look knit and crocheted. Today we are tired very very tired it's been an intense but fun weekend um, but uh, there are no distractions this is this is what I'm doing today this is 
this is my job today. So I am going to work through that sleeve and then I'm going to rip out and restart working around this one again with camel stitch instead of granny stitch and um, we'll see if it takes more or less yarn than this did. I want to say I'm hoping it's going to take less but I think it's going to take more which is annoying. We have one and a half balls of yarn left and I am not even halfway through that sleeve and um, yeah I didn't want to order more yarn but here we are. But it wouldn't be Shia is making a project video unless I had to order more yarn at some point so whatever let's uh let's get crocheting <laughs> So before we can get back to crocheting, we need to rip all of this out. All of the granny stitch around the panels. All of it needs to go. Here's a hack if you like centre pull balls but don't have a nuster pinner or ball winder. Lint roller cores are super sturdy and work great for winding yarn. And now we can start crocheting again. I'm starting by chaining the amount of stitches to match my measurement and I will crochet a 6cm wide strip of camel stitch fabric that I will then attach to the granny stitch panel. Once it's attached, I will work through the top of the panel, attaching at the bottom to the granny squares as I go. This way of attaching as you go is also something I show in the cardigan tutorial a link at the start of this video in case you want to make this. I've linked the video in the description as well. The rest of the panel is just more camel stitch back and forth and then of course I repeated all of that for the back panel. With both of the panels finished, I am finally going to attach the shoulder seams. I am doing a slip stitch join again from the wrong side. And that's what it looks like. I am feeling optimistic. This is actually better than I expected after all of my design oopsies. I had a forced break due to being out of yarn, but we finally have more and can get back on our BS. This is actually the second order of the same three skeins of yarn I made. It's been two weeks since my first time ordering, but the yarn seemed to have gotten lost in the mail and with a self-imposed deadline looming over me, I really didn't have time to wait any longer, so I ordered more. Both of my sleeves are finished and I have one skein left, which means it's time for yarn chicken, because we still have all of the ribbing left to do. Keep your fingers crossed this will be enough. I'm starting with the neck ribbing, simply because I feel like it's the most important ribbing to get onto the jumper. It would be fine with no bottom ribbing and the sleeves would survive too, but it's not like the neck would have taken an entire skein. Either way, that's a priority, neck ribbing, sleeve cuffs and then bottom ribbing. Thank you. 
neck ribbing done. Seriously, can I give you a pro tip? If you ever feel like this is fine, this will probably work with blocking, it's not fine. More foreshadowing, but look at the ribbing, it looks so bad. Either way, it's cuff time. And cuff done. More of the, uh, it's probably fine feeling here, not gonna lie, but I was so close to the finish line I felt like, so I just continued on with the bottom ribbing for the sweater. All of the ribbing has been completed, so now it is time to piece the whole thing together. I line the sleeves up with a body, middle against shoulder seam, and pin it in place with stitch markers. And I mean, it looks like a sweater. Nice. I get on to seaming it up in the same way I did before, slip stitch join on the wrong side, making sure to line everything up correctly. This time around I had a brain and figured I would try it on before seeming the other side of the jumper. And I mean, I don't hate it, but I kind of hate it.
You know what I said about that it'll probably be fine feeling? Well, it was in fact not fine. I really didn't like how any of the ribbing looked or behaved and I kind of put it to the side for the night and here we are after a nice sleep with a new plan and strategy. I did actually end up seaming both sides before doing this but that's fine because it will make this a lot easier or something. It won't make it harder at least. So what I'm going to be doing is I am once again ripping stuff out, stuff being the ribbing in this case, and now, now my dear friends, we will do some knitting. I am picking up stitches around the neckline and will be knitting my ribbing. I know this ribbing will behave the way I want it to, it will look the way I want it to, and it will have the right amount of stretch. I am doing a tubular bind off for that extra stretchy and super smooth looking edge. I did the same thing for the sleeves, ripped out the crochet cuffs and knit some new ones and here we are knitting the bottom ribbing. The previous ribbing didn't have the same amount of stretch and was a bit tight compared to the rest of the sweater so I'm loving this a lot more. This one I did a regular knit one purl one bind off. Ain't nobody got time to do a tubular bind off for an entire bottom ribbing. And with all of that done, this was truly, finally, the last step before weaving in one million ends. Friends, we made it to the end of the project, finally. What do we think? So, I have thoughts and I want to talk about my thoughts, but first of all, I just want to take a few moments to say hi, hello and welcome to everybody who's been subscribing since my last video and of course also hi, hello and welcome to everybody who's new to this video and of course hello. And welcome if you're a returning viewer. I don't want to leave anybody out. But <laughs> thank you all so, so much for being here. I appreciate each and every one of you so, so very much. I would have said something at the start of the video, but I started filming this over a month ago and this all happened over the last week. So <laughs> thank you so much. 
thank you so much for watching and for being here thank you so much for subscribing and for watching my stuff it warms my heart and you made my entire week you are awesome but yeah let's get back to my thoughts on the project so i started this project with a good idea of what i wanted to do i wanted to crochet and i wanted to knit around this of the knit texture in the game with the same yarn and it didn't work out at all <laughs> so this yarn gets very loose and drapey when you knit it and it's quite thick and sturdy when you crochet it crochet is usually a lot thicker and it's squishy and yeah it's it's a thicker fabric than you get with knitting so it was too different from the squares I ended up hating it so uh, yeah it wouldn't have held its shape or anything uh, I think I would have needed a much much thicker yarn for it to maybe work and that still wouldn't be a guarantee so yeah I also went with trying to make a great big granny square of the whole thing which I also hated because it didn't look like in the game uh, but I landed on this this is the camel stitch and it does not look like in the game fully but it does look a bit more like knitting because it does have the V's on the ridges here. Uh, it's like a mock knit stitch. You can tell it's crocheted, but it doesn't scream crochet. So I think this reads as working for looking like the original sweater, which was my goal. So I also redid all of the ribbing on the cuffs and uh, the neckline and also the ribbing on the bottom so this is where I did incorporate knitting I did get to do that despite not doing it here because I had originally uh, crocheted all of the ribbing but it turned out to not be that stretchy and it, yeah it didn't work out and I didn't like it so I'm really glad I did that so yeah that's a TLDR of the project <laughs> but my thoughts sign wise I am sort of happy I'm it's 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 fine <laughs> I think I am a little bit to Lulu and I have been envisioning this looking exactly like in the game despite knowing that it would not look anything like in the game I am not Animal Crossing character shaped I will never be Animal Crossing character shaped and so it will never look like it does on an Animal Crossing character and also the textures on the in-game sweater this one uh, the textures on the in-game sweater wouldn't be possible to make just in, in this yarn at least in real life because it's rendered in a weird way and yeah but it's cute so yeah you get what I mean right in you it wouldn't look like it but I'm still a little bit disappointed what I wish I had done though is I would have moved all of the squares up maybe five seven centimeters and just added that amount of camel stitch to the bottom instead because when I'm sitting down and on camera you can barely see the squares or I should have just done this all in heavier yarn making the squares a little bit bigger because they're also a little bit small and I needed to add extra fabric on the sides and stuff uh, so yeah if I ever make a mum sweater 2.0 I will probably try thicker heavier yarn if that happens I don't know I don't may, maybe maybe I'm talking myself into making a second one but yeah we'll see <laughs> the sleeves on the other hand I am very happy with the sleeves they turn out to be a good width they balloon out at the bottom just like they do in the game and yeah I'm also like I said really really happy I redid the ribbing and especially this one because I did bind it off with a tubular bind off which looks very profession in my opinion but yeah wow this this took a lot more work and a lot more thought than I thought it would I thought it was going to be a quite straightforward project and it was not <laughs> I redid the body panels what three times or something and of course we had the whole mishap with the yarn getting lost in the mail so uh, yeah I had to order yarn again and so the entire video got delayed I had planned out my timeline really well for this video I started well in advance over a month ago and I had set 
I, I, I'd given myself extra time in case I needed to remake stuff and I had given myself ample time to edit, plan into the whole project timeline. I usually don't even make like project timelines. I usually just pants everything but this time I was on top of my planning and then the yarn when I need to order more yarn because I need I didn't think I would need to order more yarn but I did calculate my gauge and everything how much yarn I would need with knitting in mind and I needed to crochet so of course I needed more yarn and the yarn got lost in the mail delaying everything this was supposed to go up on Animal Crossing's fourth anniversary, which was Wednesday the 20th. And here we are a few days later. And yeah, it can't be helped. It can't be helped. I mean, it wasn't finished. I needed the yarn to make it. So what is a girl supposed to do? And do you know what is the most annoying and frustrating thing about all of this? The last yarn arrived yesterday, just as I finished, just as I was done with everything. But yeah, anyway, that is probably everything I have to say about the jumper. All in all, I had a good time making this. I do like the result, even if I'm like, eh, it's fine, it will grow on me, especially with blocking. Sorry, I didn't block this yet, but that would delay it even further, and I'm not having that right now. <laughs> But yeah, I think I will stop there and let you go and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you again so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this little adventure in making stuff. If you are new to my channel and you would like to see what I get up to with my crafting in the future, in my future videos, please consider clicking the subscribe button down below, ring the bell for notifications and like the video if you liked it. I post all kinds of crafty content like knitting and crochet vlogs, crafting challenges and also host a podcast here on this channel visual podcast where i recap everything about once a month that i've been making in the last month so that's a fun time so if this sounds like something for you come join the community here on the channel we would love to have you if you watched all the way to the end leave a comment with your favorite animal crossing villager mine is probably meringue and I also have a really, really soft spot for Joey the Duck. And if you don't know anything about Animal Crossing, you're just here for the crochets, you can just leave your favourite animal emojis. And yeah, I'm really excited to know all of your favourites. So please let me know down below your favourites. And yeah, with that, I will let you go. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful time. Stay safe, make stuff you love, and I will see you again very, very soon in my next video. Bye!